Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is uh, Wednesday, December the 8th, 2023, and it's a blistering 59 degrees here in sunny Florida. And today it actually is sunny. The sun's pretty bright here today. You can see there's hardly a cloud in the sky. Nice sunny day. I haven't had those for a few days. It's been kind of overcast and rainy and dreary here the last week or so, and actually colder than what it is today. I think it's supposed to get up to around 69 today, which is, is uh, for me, is still cold. You can see I'm dressed in, in long sleeves and a long sleeve kind of a jacket here. I can't take the cold anymore. I'm getting too old for that. Anyway, today's uh, video, I'll take you over here and show you what we're going to do. Or what I've done so far on the bike. I've been kind of working on the bike off camera because I want to do some of this stuff just to see how I wanted to do it, which paints I want to use and things. And, and then I thought today I would show you actually painting some of the parts. First off, I've got about half the frame painted. I've got it painted up to about here. And then I've got to finish up here. I want to paint I'm going to paint this piece here, which originally was silver. I'm going to paint it silver again, but I'm going to use that uh, wheel silver paint, metallic paint. I'll show you here in just a second. I still got to paint this part of the frame. I'm still trying to decide what to do with these uh, lower trees here. On my bike, when I painted it back in 2010, my uh, aluminum lower trees here looked the same way. They were, they were kind of corroded and stuff, and I really didn't like the looks of it. I didn't want to spend the money and the time of taking these all apart to buy. You can buy these aftermarket ones, or even from Harley, you can buy them, uh, which is a Kawasaki, but from Harley, you can buy them chrome-plated, but you've got to take the whole assembly apart and everything, and, and I, I just couldn't see doing that. So what I did, I sanded mine down good, and I actually painted them black, and I put a black or a clear coat over them. These, again, I think I'm going to paint them the same silver I'm going to paint this up here. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. I think that would look better in black because uh, the rest of the bike is kind of light and these are kind of silver originally. And the other thing I got to do, you can see how crusty the caliper is here on the front wheel. I got to clean that up and paint it. And I'll show you on the back one. It turned out pretty nice. I actually painted it with black wrinkle paint. And um, it turned out really good. I mean, it, it looks it looks almost uh, factory with the, it's just a spray uh, black wrinkle paint. That's a high temperature paint, and um, I think it looks really good. It makes it look more original. You can see I got the back of the frame here painted with a uh, I painted it with a uh, low gloss black engine paint. It's uh, enamel with ceramic in it. Um, this is what I painted the. Uh, brake calipers with and I painted uh, some parts on my vet with this too the uh, the valve covers on my vet I actually powder coated with wrinkle paint but uh, there are some smaller parts I just sprayed with that it worked out really good here's a um, the bracket that holds rear caliper to the back of the bike I painted with that low gloss the uh, rear wheel adjuster to paint with that low gloss I tried waxing some of these pieces and they're, they're not turning out too bad there's still tiny little pits in them that are not going to come out, and I'm a little disappointed. I didn't think it would do that, but I guess sitting so long, uh, the moisture got under the chrome. And the same with some of the plastic pieces. Um, they're, they're shining up really nice, but you can still see little dots on them. So that's about as good as it's going to get, unfortunately. But I think it'll look really good when it's all on. I don't think most people even notice that. On the... Um, shifter lever it was kind of rusty i was able to just wire brush it really good and then i put a clear coat on it to keep from rusting again same way with the uh, the lower brake pedal it, it cleaned up really good a lot better than i thought it would so i just clear coated it i also took and scrubbed these down the rubber pieces i didn't put any kind of like tire shine or trim restore anything on these because it makes them slick so you don't want to do that same with the running boards uh, this is what the running board looks like now. You can see it's pretty corroded and ugly looking. And this is the other one I did. I went ahead and did it. Again, I took the rubber piece off and scrubbed it really good uh, with just some car wash soap and then wiped it down good so it's not slick at all, but it, it looks really nice now, cleaned up really nice. And then I took and sprayed 
This is the stuff that I'll spray on the wheels. It's, it's a high performance wheel coating. It's designed for wheels. And this is a, um, just the silver HWP 101 silver. Um, they have in different colors, but uh, I like the silver the best. And I sprayed that down. I put two light coats on and then a couple of little medium coats. I think it looks really good compared to what it did look like. I think it'll hold up really well. After I put the clear on, I also went over it with this gloss uh, clear coat from Duplicolor. It's made to go over that paint just to kind of give it an extra protection. This is the paint that I use to paint the frame with and some of the other metal parts. It's a, a semi-gloss black DE 1635 uh, from Duplicolor. Uh, and again, it's an engine enamel with ceramic. It's designed to withstand heat up to 500 degrees. I kind of like that because, you know, sitting out in the sun plus being close to the engine and everything, it's uh, just that much more added protection. The parts I want to try to do today, I've got this bracket here for the coil pack. You can see the paint's flaking off pretty good, so I'm going to clean it up and respray it. I've got the rock guard, the master cylinder for the rear brakes, the master cylinder cover. I've got to clean it up. The one um, mount for the, um, the floor pan with the shifter lever, it needs to be cleaned up and painted. The front fender mount and the rear for the saddlebags, the two mounts on those. Those aren't too bad. I can just kind of scuff them up and spray them. They're not real rusty or anything. So the worst part's going to be this one, trying to get down in all the nooks and crannies to get it cleaned out good so I can paint it. But that shouldn't be too much of a problem. And then over here, this is the uh, the belt guard on the back. I went ahead, it was kind of faded out, kind of almost milky looking. So I sprayed it with, um, again, it's another Duplicolor product, vinyl and fabric. It's it's more for like interior, uh, you know, your your uh, vinyl pieces in, in your interior. And um, it's a flexible finish, so it won't crack off. And again, this is gloss black. Um, they make a regular, trim and bumper paint and uh, I have used this before and I've used it on my Jeep Cherokee Sport it's got I'll show you over here it's got the you know the guards over the wheels and the belt down the side I do the the door handles the front rear bumper uh, corners they're vinyl and it holds up really good I, I did this one probably two years ago and it still looks really good um, but it's kind of a flat black and I just I didn't like it on these parts. I like this. It's kind of a, a, a gloss black. You can really see it there. Um, I sprayed this piece first. It was really bad. I sprayed it with the, the trim and bumper paint, the flat black stuff, just to see how it turned out. I didn't like it, so I sprayed the vinyl over it. So it's not quite as shiny, I don't think, as it could be. Plus, you can still see some rough texturing where the, the plastic is kind of worn away and kind of burnt away. I don't know if I could maybe sand that down and respray it if it'd come out a little smoother, but I don't want to screw with it too much and screw it up. I might just try sanding it once and see what happens. It can't look any worse. But that's what I've got done so far, and um, we'll go ahead and get set up and we'll, we'll start doing these other pieces here. I wanted to show you on these floor pans to take these rubber pieces off, and my Harley is basically the same way, so I'm, I'm going to guess that maybe most bikes with the floor pans like this are going to have the same setup on them. These things are just held in with little rubber uh, ears. Um, you got these little smaller ones and then these two bigger ones here in the middle. These, these are mounted kind of solid to the pan. On a, on a Harley, these things kind of float, gives you a little bit more cushion, um, you know, for vibration on your feet and stuff like that. But these are not quite that way. But what you got to do is, and you want to be careful, you could probably put some like WD-40 or soapy water or something on these when you're taking them apart, any when you're putting them together. But uh, you want to try to get that down in there, in that hole. And then what I do is I grab the back side of here and just kind of pull on it just a little bit. You don't want to pull real hard or you might pull that little, that little button off the back of the pad. You need a little pressure on it, and you get it just right, it'll just pop right out like that. And you can kind of see it on the back side there. It's got a lip on it that holds it in there. And you do that on all of them. And then this middle one, it's got a big lip on it around here. 
And again, but you do it basically the same way. You just start working your way around it. And once you get it pretty much through there, it'll just pop on out. You want to pull on the back side if you're doing that, but you don't want to pull real hard because like these, especially if they're a little old and brittle, they might break off. So you do that to all of them and then you, you'll have it off of there and then you can clean this up. And what I did on that other one, I took it over and I wire brushed the area that I'm going to paint really good with a power wire brush. Then I wiped it down with acetone and then I painted it. So I'll go ahead and get this off and, and uh, I'll show you wire brushing it. Yeah, it's shining up. up pretty nice okay I'm gonna wipe this down with some acetone just to get any grease or oil or dirt off of it and try to wear rubber gloves whenever you're working with any kind of solvents or chemicals that can absorb into your skin some of that stuff can cause some serious cancer and things so and plus Wearing rubber gloves, you won't get any greasy fingerprints back on the same area you just cleaned off that you want to paint. So you wipe that down good, and then let it sit and dry for a little bit. Okay, so I, I let it dry for a few minutes here. It dried up really good, ready to paint. I've got this um, the wheel paint that I'm going to spray on it. Now, you, your first coat you want to put on fairly light. I usually go two light coats and, and two medium covers, and that's usually enough. It depends on what it is. But um, when you first spray it on, you can't even hardly tell you sprayed anything on it. Okay, that's the first coat. While that's drying, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and on these black pieces that I, I want to paint, I'm going to take them over on the power wire brush and get all the surface I can get with a power wire brush. And then in here, I'm probably going to have to use a, like a Dremel tool or something with a wire brush on it to get down in here. Same way on this piece here, I'm going to wire brush everything I can on the outside. Same with this one, same with those. And um, then what we'll have to do is get in here with a Dremel with a wire brush or something, clean the rest of it up as best I can. So I can get them set up and do that next. Okay, so today's Friday, December the 8th. Uh, today I'm picking back up on working on the bike. Um, I'm trying to clean the rims. And I've tried several different things here off camera because I was kind of frustrated. I want to see how this stuff's going to work. Let me get the wheel down here. I don't know if you can see. Let me turn it. Turn towards the sun here. So, see how black the center of the rim is right there right now. The whole rim was like that pretty much, especially on the side with the brake disc. And I got, I was able to run a wire brush around the outer perimeter on each side and get most of it off. I still have a little bit of rust down there at the bottom, you can see. But overall, it's cleaning up pretty good. And I've tried a little bit of everything. I mean, I've got, uh, you can see here, I've got several different wheel cleaners here aircraft stripper, brake cleaner, bleach white, and some um, green cleaner that came with my uh, foam cannon. And I, I've tried all those different ones on there. I sprayed them all on there at the same time to see if they would combine. They would really take it off. And nothing really seems to cut this very good. I mean, you have to really scrub with wire brush. And you know, I've got a wire brush right there. And um, it's just taking forever. You scrub and scrub and scrub, you, you rinse it off, you spray this stuff on again, scrub and scrub and scrub. It's just going to be a slow process. I think I'm still going to have to paint at least the center hub back with that silver paint because it is kind of tarnished and 
you can see the, the black on there, that's not coming off at all. That's I, I've cleaned it several times with all the different cleaners and that's the best it's getting. So I might just have to spray that. The spokes aren't cleaning up very well either. They almost look like they're supposed to be black. Uh, they were chrome originally. But I think, you can see over on, let me find a spot here I got cleaned up very good. You see down in there, it's looking pretty good. I mean, it's not perfect, and I, I think it'll look better once I wax them. But I almost think I could maybe get away with not painting the room itself. But uh, the only problem I have is those spokes. I can't figure out a good way to clean those. If anybody's got an idea, please leave it in the comments below. But um, I, I'm just a point. I'm going to get it as clean as I can, and I might just mask it off and just spray the whole thing with the silver paint and be done with it. Um, the chrome does have some bad spots in it that are going to show up no matter what I do and that silver paint at least kind of hide those a little bit so I think I'm going to scrub on them and try to get the rest of this black out of here and then um, see what they look like and make a decision then. It's got most of that out of there, but I've still got some spots, so I'm going to have to do it two or three times and uh, just keep going over it and rinsing it off until I get that spot and then I move to the next spot. It's just time consuming. Okay, I've got the wheels cleaned up now, and I've got this one. I went ahead and took these um, turtle wax chrome polish and waxed it. And it doesn't look too bad. I mean, it's not perfect, but it, it looks a lot better than I thought it was going to turn out. I'm still trying to decide what I want to do here. If I want to go ahead and repaint these silver or just leave them like that. Um, I, I'm probably going to, I'm probably just going to repaint the areas that are going to be definitely showing out towards the uh, outside of the motorcycles. So I'm going to go ahead and I've got this wheel cleaned up too. I just got to put the turtle wax on it. So I'm going to go ahead and, and do that now. And then we will probably go to the next step of masking these off and spraying the, the painted areas. So I just dab a little wax on the applicator there. Rub it in really good. I'll be careful, I don't want to get it on the tire itself because then it's going to turn white. <laughs> okay, so that's all waxed. I'm going to let it sit until it hazes over really good and then we'll buff it out. Okay, I've got this wheel all taped off now. Um, I'll check the other one, see if it's ready to be buffed out. If it is, then I'll go ahead and get it taped off and we'll, we'll spray that silver. Uh, the silver hubs in. Okay. We'll get this mask off now and we'll we'll get ready to paint them. Okay, so now I'm masking off the uh, the brake rotors to be, um, I just want to paint the areas that aren't uh, a contact surface area on the brake rotors. I've already got this side already masked off. I'm going to show you on this side how I did that. On curved surfaces like this, I take this, it's quarter inch wide masking tape, and I just come in here, stick it on here, and then just slowly walk it around like that, and pull it just a little tight, you don't pull real hard, just enough to stretch enough to where it'll, it'll go around that curve easily. Oops, let me bump the camera there. And just keep going around like that, just right against the original paint line. And if you're off a little bit, you can see the, the brake pad runs here. So you got almost about a quarter inch wide area there that the brake pad doesn't touch. So you know, I screwed that tape up right there. I'm going to have to break it off. So if you mess up, no big deal. Just... Uh, Stick it down like that. 
get rid of your bad section of tape that I messed up there because I was talking and I bumped it. And come back and start back a little ways so you can get pick up right where you left off and just work your way right around. Like that. This makes it a lot easier. If you had like half-inch wide masking tape or something, you'd have to be putting little pieces on, trimming and cutting. And I'll show you, I'm gonna use half-inch to fill in the rest of that. That's it. Okay, now because I want to paint this edge too, I don't want the masking tape coming over the end of it. So as you can see on this side, I've trimmed it back to where it's not on that surface. And I'll do the same thing on this side. What I do is I start out with half inch masking tape, put it on here and just run it straight out like that and just break it off. Okay, and I work my way around like that until I have the whole surface covered. Push down, get that edge down good. There you go. Okay. <laughs> I normally don't like using this blue masking tape because it, especially if you're putting it on a painted surface, sometimes it'll peel the paint off. It sticks too good. I like using this green, uh, it's called frog tape. It works really good. It sticks down really good, but it peels off really easy. Plus, um, you can have a roll for two years and it'll still peel right apart. A previous video where I, I did the brakes on my Corvette, I painted the rotors on those uh, when I did them, and I, I showed a little trick where you, you can take a hammer and tap around the outside of this edge, right on that edge, just lightly tap on it, and it'll cut that masking tape and just peel it off. Uh, it works really good, especially if you're trying to make gaskets because the material's a little bit thicker. It's hard to, to cut it to fit just right, and you do that, you put it down, you tap on it, it'll cut right through it, and it works really good. And you don't tap hard enough to hurt the edge of the metal. You're just barely you're cutting through the masking tape. But there's another method here that I've, I've kind of learned that uh, it actually works a little quicker on masking tape, is, is just take a, the edge of a screwdriver, preferably a round shanked one, and just just kind of push down and, and slide it across right on that edge and it'll cut right through that it's a little bit faster than the hammering technique oh shoot there just messed up it's the first time it's ever done that to me um, so it will mess up sometimes but uh, the nice thing about the hammering routine is it's it's for gaskets and stuff that's a little bit thicker that you can't just rub and cut through like you can with masking tape and there's a sharp edge on this uh, I shouldn't say sharp edge, it's not going to cut you, but it is to a to an edge on the edge of this rotor, so it's, you just hit that edge and it cuts, cuts right through the tape. But normally, if you kind of stay right on that edge, it cuts pretty good. I'm going to have to go back and check that one area and see if i got to put a little piece of tape on there before I mess it up. And once you do that, you can just go around and it, you know, comes right off like that. And it leaves you a nice, a nice 
sharp edge for the paint. I'd already wiped this down with uh, acetone before I put the tape on. I'll probably wipe it down again where I'm putting my hand in the center here just to make sure I'm not going to have any problem with the paint sticking. And I'm using that wheel paint. Okay, there you go. And you can see the one area where I pulled it up there, I'm going to have to put a little piece there and redo it. So, no big deal. It's an easy fix. Put it back on there. And there you go. ready to be painted. Okay, I, I wiped these back down again with acetone and I'm not going to primer these because they still have good coat of paint on them. It's just uh, kind of discolored and stuff. So I hit it with some sandpaper and then I'm using the um, Dupacolor wheel coating. This is the, the, the uh, silver. Uh, it's HWP-101. And I'll put a, a just a light coat on it first, and then I'll put two medium coats on it, and then I'll I'll go with the um, the wheel gloss clear coat. This is a gloss. Um, it's an HWP one zero three. The first coat, um, especially if it's if it um, has no paint on it at all, like that edge. I wire brush that edge pretty good. Um, and even on that painted surface, you can still see it. It's just not very thick. You can still see through it. So, but again, that doesn't matter. It's just a, a base coat to give it something to stick to. And I do the same thing on this one. And that's all there is to it. I'll let that dry probably 10 or 15 minutes and I'll put the next coat on it. While I'm waiting for those rotors to dry, uh, this is the uh, back wheel. I've got uh, two coats, or a light coat and then two medium coats of the silver wheel paint on, on both sides of the rear wheel and then both sides of the front wheel. And now, this is the second side. I've already done the other side with, with the silver and the clear. Now I've got to wait for this to dry and then I'll put two coats of clear on it. And then the wheels will be ready to hopefully reassemble once I get the brake rotors um, painted. I can start assembling the rear wheel. And I'll show you over here. I have the, uh, the dry belt uh, sprocket for the rear wheel. I've got it coated with that silver paint. I've got the ring that goes on the other side sprayed with the um, engine enamel, the black, and I have to reassemble it. So that'll be ready to go back on the bike and I can install the rear wheel. I've got, I've got the floor pan painted. I've got to just put this back on and I'll show you how I do that when I get ready to do that and reassemble it. And on the the rear brakes, uh, I showed you in a previous video where I, um, or early in this video, I think it was. I don't know. I've been shooting so much video, I'm not sure when it is. But anyway, I painted this with wrinkle paint. It turned out really good. I mean, it, it looks really nice and even and uniform. And then I took a file and I cleaned off the lettering, so that kind of stands out. So that's kind of neat looking. I still have to do the front brake, but I want to get the rear end here reassembled. And then I'll start on the front end of the bike. Okay, so I got the disc all painted. Um, I'm just going to peel the tape off now. Show you what they look like.
Doesn't look too bad, does it, for an amateur? Okay, that looks pretty good. That'll be ready to be bolted back on the wheel then. Anyway, this is going to wrap up this portion of what I'm doing on the bike. So um, I guess I'll see you on the next video. Have a great day.